paper. So I'm going to start out with a piece of orange paper. Um, doesn't matter what color it is. Um, if you just have white paper, that's okay too. But I decided it'll look pretty cool with colored paper. So I'm going to start out with color. Um, I'm going to get some paint and I am planning to use red and blue. So I'm going to use some red and blue acrylic paint and I'm going to dish them out. You see I have these um, lids. That's what I use. And you should have some paper plates, but you're going to need to put them out because we're going to be stamping. Today we are not going to be using any brushes, believe it or not. <laughs> we are just going to be stamping. So I'm going to take some red paint and put it on here. A nice glop of red. And I'm going to take some blue. And if you have room, you can put it next to it, but I'm going to put it over here because it, it'll spread out a little bit as you use it. And in your supply list, um, you should have a bunch of things like cork, you know, a piece of cork or a pencil. Um, I got a little bottle cap from a water bottle. I also found this cool thing. This is the middle of a tape dispenser, you know, scotch tape. When you run out of your scotch tape, this was in the middle and it's like, oh, that's cool. It's like got a double circle and I stamped with it and it made a really cool stamp. So I'm going to stamp with this and it's a little bit bigger than the bottle cap. And I've got an even bigger circle, which is this little baby cup. So I'm going to use the rim on this cup. I might even be able to use this side of the cup. So these are the things I'm going to use and I'm going to start stamping on here. So my cork, if you guys want to make stamps, you can make stamps too, because my cork, I cut, a, I cut it apart so that there's a little star on this side. And I made a couple of wavy lines on this side. This cork is just a regular cork, so it's just going to make a circle. So we can start off anywhere you want. I'm going to start with red. And I'm going to use my fancy schmancy uh, cork. Start making some marks. See, I'm going to go with the star on the blue. It's pretty cool. Let's try the circle. Put it around the star. Isn't that cool? I love the way these come up. I think we need some blue circles too. Let's make some blue circles here. See, what haven't I used yet? Um, the bottle cap. Now the cool thing about the bottle cap is it also has these ridges. I don't know if the ridges will go. Let's give it a try. I always love experimenting. Making marks is cool. You can make marks with just about anything. Eh. Not that great. I think it's better if I just use the side. A little bit smaller. Lots of little circles here. Take my pencil and I'm going to use the eraser part of the pencil. Put a circle inside a circle. Circle inside a star. Take 
you can go wild with these dots. Now you don't have to worry too much about how great it looks as long as you um, spread out the colors because what we're gonna do with this piece of paper later is we're going to cut it up. So it's not gonna look anything like this when we get to the end, you'll see. It's gonna be sort of cool. Oh, that looks sort of like a face. The other thing you can do with a pencil is not just make circles. You can drag it if you want. See what kind of shapes that makes. So we'll spend just a few more minutes on this piece of paper and then we're going to switch papers. Got to let this one dry. Since that thing looks like a face, I think I may put a smile on it. <laughs> Got a happy face, <laughs> sort of. Okay. Oh, I didn't use my big round uh, cork. Let me do that. And then we'll move on. A bunch of stamped circles here. Okay, looks like we're celebrating something. It's like a party. All right, so let's set these aside. Put it somewhere where it'll dry and we'll get back to it. The next piece of paper I have is a yellow piece of paper. And with this one, we are going to use our sponges. So I like using sea sponges. You can buy sea sponges like at Michael's. So this is a sea sponge. And here's another sea sponge. Um, I also want to try this. It's, um, this is a sponge that you, your mom or dad probably uses to wash dishes with. And then I've got another cool little thing here. It's a, I don't know what you call it, a bath. It's a bath thing. It's called a bath poof. <laughs> but I never tried to use this, but it has really interesting shapes in it. So I'm gonna try this. So for this one, oops, I got some. Sorry. We're gonna get some orange and we're going to get violet. I don't know about you, but violet is one of my favorite colors. So I'm gonna put some violet in here. Ooh, I'm running low. Gonna have to go out and buy more. That's how much I like it. <laughs> I use it all the time. And we will get a little orange. I'll put the orange in this one. Sponges are really cool because you, you really never know what kind of shape it makes. And with, my, with these sea sponges, I always wet them down a little bit. So I have a, a little water over here. So I'm gonna dunk it in the water and squeeze it a little bit just to get it a little wet. So I played around with this sea sponge before and the cool thing about this one is look at the end, it has this hole and then it's got the sponge around it and wait till you see what kind of um, marks this makes. So I think I'll take and put this in the purple and start out. So. Let's see what kind of 
marks it makes. So you don't wanna to put too much paint on here. So what I've been doing is I'm dipping it in the paint and then I'm sort of tapping it around the edge to get a lot of the paint off because you don't want it to get too bloppy. I think that's really cool looking. <laughs> We'll fade it out here. It's sort of like barnacles. You know what barnacles are? They grow under ships. Um, for the orange, I think I'm going to try my brand new bath puff. That's what it's called. Let's see. And I've never used this. You see it's brand new, so I have no idea what kind of uh, mark it's gonna make. So I'm really excited to see what, what kind of mark this is gonna make. Let's see. Ooh, that is cool. I think I need more paint. I think I'm going to use this on some of my paintings. This makes a really cool mark. I like it. Um, I'm gonna try this. It, you see it's, there's paint on it because I, I normally use this to uh, wipe off my paintbrush, but I've never used it like this either. So this is the first time I'm using this as a mark maker. Let's see what this does. Ooh, that's an interesting shape too. So I wanna try to get an even amount of purple and an even amount of orange sort of like that. I think I'm going to make some orange barnacles. And that's sort of cool. And I think that's good enough. Okay, so those two are done. I'm going to set this over here. I've got an area for drying. And the last one we're going to do, I've got purple paper. And I am going to use for paint, let's see, I've got some yellow. Hey, John, can I interrupt for a minute and just yeah. see if there's any questions? Oh, yeah. Anybody want to unmute and ask a question? Was everybody frantically running to their kitchen cupboards and bathroom cupboards to get sponges? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. OK. Yes. Um. Okay. What if you don't have the paint with you right now? Oh, you don't have paint with you? Oh, we're going to get paint. I want to tell him something. Is this, uh, Lisa, is this recorded so you can come back and watch it again? Yep, I will have this. I will be able to make this available to you so you can watch it again when you have your slide ready. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Okay. What are we making? <laughs> we are making leaves. Oh. Um, and it doesn't question. seem like we're making leaves right now, but what we just painted, they are going to turn into really cool leaves. You just wait and see. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Are, are we supposed to be painting right now? If you want to, yes, you should be painting right now. But you can also just watch and then paint later because, like Lisa says, this is being recorded. And if you forget, you can go back and look at it again. 
But if you're painting right now, that's perfect. You can paint and follow along. Sure, I know. I also have a question. Okay. You can put your paint in there. No, he has one of these things. Okay. And those one, that one already has chemicals. I can get it from him. Did we have another question? You can be painting. Oh yeah, me, I did. And what is your question? Since when did you start um, being an artist? Since Bible Color, we can be painting. When did I start becoming an artist? Yeah. Um, in elementary school, because I love drawing. But I didn't know I was going to be an artist, but I knew I liked drawing and painting. And then when I got into high school, I took an art class. And that's when it really hit me that, hey, I think I want to be a, an artist. <laughs> And then I went to art school. Oh. And I've been painting ever since. All right, so I have some green and I have some yellow here. And we are going to use bubble wrap because bubble wrap is really cool because it has all these bumps in it. And I was really careful not to pop any of these. I bet you you've popped bubble wrap before. I love popping it, but I was very careful not to pop this bubble wrap because I want all of the bumps. So what I'm gonna do, I got a smaller piece here to make it easier. I'm trying to figure out if they're raised on, which side they're raised on. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of this in the paint. And then I'm going to pop it on the paper and let's oh, see really? what kind of mark it makes. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Before I do any more, I think I am going to take some green and a credit card. So this was an old Rite Aid card, or you could have, a, you know, anything that's fairly thick. And we're going to just pick up some paint on the edge of this card. And you'll see it makes cool marks. I love using credit cards. You can sweep it. Look at that. Wow, that's cool. a little bit here. And I'm thinking about where I want to put the yellow as I'm doing this. Straight lines and swoops. This is a swoop. Here's a couple of straight lines. All right, let's go back to the bubble wrap in the yellow. I think we need some yellow over here. How does that look? Pretty good. Some yellow over here. So again, just like with the first two, and sort of covering most of the paper. And not worrying too much about how it's looking because we are going to be cutting these things up in a little while. So there we go. Um, and that's all the painting we're going to do before our next step. So we'll set this one aside to dry too. So we're gonna to need to let these dry. And the next thing we are going to do is work on our leaf shapes because we need to make the leaves. Um, I don't know, it sounded like you guys didn't get this paper with the leaves cut out on it, which is okay. Oh, they, um, John, they have a, they have a die cut 
that I think is sort of like a maple, a Canadian maple leaf. Oh, a Canadian maple leaf. Okay. And then I was also going to just show them how to use a, like a plate to do a simple curve, like a football, you know? Right. So we can take a little piece of paper like this. And if we, I just so happen to have a pie pan here. You can use the edge of the pie pan. And if you get a pencil, you can outline like half of it, like that. And then if you want a, a leaf that looks like this, see that? That's a leaf. You don't have to draw the lines. I'm just drawing the lines to show you where the leaf is. Um, Another way you can draw a leaf that's more curvy is instead of doing it like that, you start out again by drawing the edge of the pie plate or the edge of the plate, whatever, whatever you have that's round. <laughs> mm, I don't know if this is going to work. See if I need to go a little farther. Can we get it? No, nah, this may not be a great shape. I don't know. What do you think? I'm gonna go with this one. I like this one. So we're gonna make a couple of leaves. So there's one. I'll make a second one. I'll make this one a little smaller. There's our second leaf. So now if you have a piece of, um, if you have scissors, where are my scissors? Okay. We're gonna cut the shape out. And I think I'm going to leave this little piece here as a stem. So later, if you want, you can cut a whole lot of leaves, lots of different leaves. Um, you might even want to try to tackle that Canadian maple leaf, but right now that would take way too much time, probably spend the rest of the time cutting out the leaf. So I'm just cutting this simple shape out here. I think I'm going to use this part here as a stem on this one. And there we go. Two leaves. Like I said, if you want to keep working on this later, you can make as many leaves as you want. And it's sort of fun to just make all sorts of leaves. And we will have enough paper, painted paper, to make lots of leaves. But for now, we're just going to make two leaves because of the time. Now. This is a very important step. You want to take your parchment paper, and this has to be parchment paper. And I'm trying to find my pencil. We're going to trace this out on the parchment paper. And I'm using a, a softer leaded pencil, but a number two pencil is just fine. You want to make the line pretty thick when you're tracing. 
and you want to make it really dark, dark and thick. So I'm going to trace all around this leaf. Nice and dark and nice and thick. And can't forget the stem. Oops, move my leaf. I'll have to re readjust it here. Right about there, okay. So we're gonna be making marks on our painted paper using, using this parchment paper. So I think this part's gonna be really cool. You'll, you'll like this. So there's one, nice and dark. And we'll take the smaller leaf and do the same thing. I'm pressing really hard and trying to make it really, really dark and black and pretty thick. See how thick those lines are. John, um Adriana has a question. Did you raise your hand because you have a question, Adriana? Yeah. You have to, you have to unmute, right? Yeah, I'm going to do that for you, sweetie. Okay, I, whoops. For some reason, it's not letting me unmute you. So I guess you can unmute yourself. If you have a question, Adriana, speak up. Hit the mute button. Or you can write it in the chat if you want to write it in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna lower your hand. Do you have a question, Adriana? No, okay, go ahead. Okay. So I have trouble going all the way around without moving the paper. So I, I like when I'm tracing to have it on top for some reason, so I'm moving it up. And that moved my leaf, so I'm going to have to readjust it a little bit. When I'm drawing or painting or anything, I, I like to make it easy on myself, so I spin the paper around a lot. Sort of hard to do if you're painting, though, when you're standing there in front of a palette. But, I mean, in front of an easel. Okay, I think I've got enough pencil carbon on here. So we've got two. And we are going to be using this a little bit later on. And like I said, um, Later, when you have time, you can make all sorts of different leaves. You can use your maple leaf, too, that you have. You can put the maple leaf down and then just trace around that onto parchment paper if you want. But um, for today, I it'd be too hard to cut that out because of all the little jiggy jaggedies on the outside of that maple leaf. So a smooth one will go fast. So now we're going to set this aside and let's go back and see if our paintings have dried. So remember this one, it's our first one. It's a little bit wet still, but I think it'll be okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into strips. We're going to cut this into strips, not the long way, but the short way this way. And I have somewhere a ruler. And they're going to be like about an inch wide or so. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a few marks here.
Oh, good. My happy face is going to be inside one of these. There we go. So we're going to cut this into strips. And I probably, this one's real skinny here, so we're not going to use that one. And then the one on here doesn't have too many marks on it either, so I don't think I'm going to use that one either. But this is going to be cool because this is where after you make these strips, you can decide which ones you want to use and you can mix and match or whatever. You will see. So trying to stay on the line and cut as straight as I possibly can. And John, just so you know, we're at 4.30, halfway mark. Oh, okay. Well, we got plenty of time then. Yeah. Okay. So there's one set of strips. Looks different now, huh, once you cut it up. And then let's see. Here's the one with the sponges. We're going to do the same thing. Here we go. So I'm, I'm sort of cheating, I guess. I'm, I'm using the ed, I'm using this width of the ruler. So I'm line, once I make this line, I'm lining up, I'm putting my ruler against that line. And then I can make the mark up there. Then I shift my ruler over and line it up to that line so that they're all parallel. Does somebody have a question? No? Okay. Boy, I'm, I'm looking at the marks that the little uh, bath poof made and I really like that. <laughs> I've got a new marking tool for my studio. I think I'm gonna be using that a lot. These, these are really cool marks. And you can look around, look around the house, make sure it's okay to use it for painting, but there's all sorts of things out there that you can use to make marks with. Um, and I've actually gone outside and gotten sticks and things like that to make marks with. A lot of times when I'm at the store, like this bath poof that I got, I wasn't looking for that, but I was just walking down the aisle and I saw it. And I guess that's the artist in me. I looked at it and I went, oh, that might make an interesting mark. <laughs> And I buy strange things all the time. My wife is asking me, why did you buy that? It's like, oh, well, it looks like it can make an interesting mark. So that's why I bought it. <laughs> so I've got all sorts of strange things around with paint on them for um, making marks. Almost done with this. Yeah, I'm in love with my sponge with the hole in it. These, I just love these marks here that that makes. All right. And I'm not going to use this skinny piece. I'll get rid of that. But this one, I went all the way out to the edge, so I can use the rest of these. 
So there's that one. And then the last one, remember this one with the bubble wrap? Yeah. Um, that looks sort of thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my uh, towel here. I'm just going to sop up a little bit of these high spots because they're still wet. Put too much paint down. Got carried away with my dots. Yeah, that's that should be okay. So same as the other ones, you're gonna cut them, mark them, and cut them. I don't know, I found out that the best art takes a long time to make. You can't just sit there and do something in 10 minutes and have it looking that great. As far as painting. I've seen amazing stuff done really fast with those sketch artists out there in San Francisco, but that's something different. I'm talking about painting. That's one of the problems I have is being patient when I paint. I'm not that patient sometimes and I can't wait. Today I can't wait because I only have so much time to show you. So this is a little bit wetter than I probably would like the paint to be, but I wanna show you guys. So I guess today it's okay for me to be a little impatient. <laughs> All right. Again, that skinny piece there, we're just going to toss because it's too skinny. Get rid of that. Yeah, bubble wrap is another one of my favorite items that I use to make marks with. I love how it looks. So I didn't really mean to do this, but this sort of looks like um, yellow flowers and green leaves, huh? In art, we call that happy accidents. It's always nice to get a happy accident and say, wow, that looks really cool. <laughs> One of the things I like about art is you really never know what the end is going to look like. You sort of have an idea in your mind of what you want it to look like. And sometimes it ends up looking the way you really wanted it to, but sometimes it doesn't, but it still is really cool and you've made something brand new and unique. You made it, but you really don't know how. <laughs> Had that happened before. It's like, wow, how did I do that? But it looks really cool. All right, so now we've got all the paper cut up. Next step in this process, we want to get some cardstock. And what I've done, I couldn't find cardstock, but I have a um, file folder and the file folder is pretty thick. So I'm gonna use the file folder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in half. And this is where you use your artist's brain and you sit here and try and figure out what's a good combination. So you want to look at all the pieces that you have and you want to decide which pieces you want to use. And we are going to glue them down onto this piece of paper. So before I glue them down though, I am going to see what looks good. I really like this part of the yellow, so I'm going to use this. John, I'm going to interrupt. Uh, Mercedes, yes. do you have a question? No, I don't. Okay. No? Okay. Thank 
if you do have a question, you know, raise your hand or write it in chat. I'd be happy to answer. Do I want to put two of these together? Maybe? I don't know. I think maybe I'll put two of them together. No, I think I'm just going to split them up. And I think we need an orange over here. And I'm going to put another purple one. So you see all these pieces of paper you have left over. That's for more leaves. So you can make lots of leaves here. So I sort of like the way this looks. And I don't know if you noticed, but I like the happy face. So I have the happy face in right here. And we're going to glue this down. So get your glue stick and we're going to glue this down. And you don't need to worry about lining it up with the edges or anything. Um, what you want to try to do, though, is try and snug these up together so there's almost no gap between the strips. But other than that, you can just glue them down without worrying about getting close to the edge, because the edge doesn't matter. And this one. And you see, with all these strips that we have left over, you can do this with at least two more. You can make two more of these, which means you're going to have to make more leaves. And the purple one. Make sure it's pushed up against the other one real well. Yellow one. Another purple one. And finally, the orange one. And that looks pretty cool. And now, once you get here, the final step is to grab one of your leaves. And I need to figure out what I did with my... Oh, here they are. <laughs> Got too many places I was putting things down. So you remember the parchment paper. So I'm going to put a leaf so it cuts across this way. And I'm being very careful. So I want to get the happy face because I like the happy face. So the side that you drew on, the side that has the pencil marks, has to go down against the paper. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer the, the, the um, carbon from the pencil onto this piece of paper. And so if you have your um, credit card or have something really hard that you can rub against it, and I I think I'm going to use the back of this pencil because it's, it's really hard. And you're just going to rub really hard. Well, first, I'm trying to find what I did with my credit card. So strange, things disappear on my desk. I have too many things on my desk. 
So we're gonna rub. I need you to eat food. Is there a question? If you have a question and you're having some feedback with your microphone like that, type it in the chat if you can or have an adult help you. I'm going to eat. <laughs> I can't understand. Is he talking about eating? <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do with the leaves? Um, you were tracing the leaves onto parchment paper. Oh, okay. Sorry. And because the um, the maple leaves that you had were so ridgy, it would take too long to cut them out. So I showed you how to make leaves with a pie pan. But then you trace it onto the parchment paper, and now we're transferring that shape to our painted surface. And if I did it well enough, see how it transferred over? So now you can see the shape of the leaf on here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the smaller one. And John, just to clarify, the their maple leaves are already cut out. They're die cuts. Right. So they, so they can trace them. They can yeah. trace them right onto the um, parchment paper. Correct. And then you could also trace around the die cut, but there's something easier about uh, using this trace and transfer technique, especially when it's a um, uh, when you when you've got a, 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 what am I trying to say? When you've got these strips and there's a lot of different colors and a lot of different patterns, uh, because you can see through it, the the parchment paper you can see through, so you yeah. know exactly where you're putting the lines of the leaf. If you were using the actual construction paper leaf and putting it on top, you wouldn't be able to see through it. You could trace around it, but you wouldn't know exactly where you're tracing. So that's why this trace and transfer technique. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. And that's why, since I liked my happy face here, I wanted to make sure that was in one of the leaves. So when I put my leaf pattern on there, you could see right through. There it is. That's what I want on there. So there are my leaves. And then it's easy now. All you have to do is what transferred on here made the line. So now you cut out your leaves. And let's see what these leaves look like. And isn't that cool? Oh, I guess this one here, so skinny, I guess I didn't have any glue over here. Let me glue this one down a little bit better. Came off, it's okay, there we go. Look at that leaf, isn't that cool? And let's do the smaller one that I have over here. So like I said, you have plenty of strips. You can do this a bunch of times. You can make more strips too, now that you know how to do it. And you can make a ton of leaves. And once you get these leaves, there's all sorts of things you can do with the leaves too. Um, if you get a big fat piece of ribbon or something and you can hot glue them to the side of that, and you can make a table runner. Um, you can make a hanging decoration if you want by just uh, punching a hole on the end, right? So if you punch a hole on the end, and then you can hang them up like from a chandelier or something like that. Just make sure you don't get too close to the lamps because it'll get too hot. But there's, and then, you know, you can think of all sorts of different things you can do with these. You can get a piece of cardboard, round piece of cardboard and hot glue them around for a little hot plate. Um, you can use them as table decorations. I was thinking you could put them on um, 
like John, there's a question. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, I gotta go eat. Okay. okay. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 -bye. <laughs> okay, so there's our craft for today. And I think those leaves came out looking pretty cool. They look nothing like what we painted, huh? Because we cut them up and then put them back together again. 